After a long wait, we finally got some incredible control net models for SDXL. These are going to make our workflow so much better. We've got a great canny model, a depth model, a tile model for upscaling, and an open pose model. In this video, we're going to learn how to download, install, and properly use each of these models in Comfy UI. Don't worry if you're new to Comfy UI, or if you've just switched from Automatic 11.11, or any other web UI. This video is beginner friendly. All right, let's dive in and get started. Let's start by heading over to Shinseer's Hugging Face profile page. There, you'll find all the recently trained control nets for SDXL. Now, you might be wondering how these models are created. Well, to train a control net model for SDXL from scratch, you need to provide it with lots of examples. These examples include images and their corresponding conditioning information, such as edges, depth maps, or segmentation masks. So, how does this work? Basically, the model learns to use this extra information to generate better images. It's kind of like teaching a child to draw by showing them pictures and explaining what each part is. The more examples the model sees, the better it gets at generating images with the right conditions. However, here's the thing. Training a control net model isn't easy. It requires a huge dataset of image condition pairs and a lot of computing power which can be very expensive. That's why we should take a moment to thank Shinseer for this amazing work. Let's begin with the depth model. To download it, we need to go to Files and Versions. The most important file here is Diffusion PyTorch Model .save tensors. We need to download this file and place it in our Comfy UI main folder, inside the Models folder, and then inside the ControlNet folder. However, it's important to rename the file to something like depth SDXL Shinsur, so we can tell it apart from other control net models. Now let's head back to the main Shinsur page on Hugging Face. Here, we can do the same thing for the other control net models. First, there's the tile model for upscaling. We'll cover that in a separate video in a few days. Then, we have the Open Pose SDXL model. This model is used to extract the body structure from a reference image, including the positions of the head, limbs, joints, and hands. It then allows us to create new images that match the same pose and body structure. The cool thing is, it leaves other details like the background and clothing open for interpretation by the SDXL checkpoint model. Shinseer developed an impressive version of Canny. This helps us get the edges and outlines from a picture. Then, it lets Stable Diffusion make new images that keep the same structure, but add new things like color, texture, and style. Today, we're going to check out three models, Canny, Depth, and Open Pose. I think these will really improve how we work and give us more control over our AI digital models and characters. So let's dive in and learn how to use these new control net models in Comfy UI. First, we open Comfy UI and load a default workflow. Then, we choose our favorite checkpoint model. In this video, I'm going with the Real Vision XL Lightning model. Next, let's set up our control net nodes. To start, we need to load an image. I've got this portrait of a woman with lots of small details. After that, we connect the image to a Depth Anything node. This processes the image and gives us a depth image. Make sure the control net image has the same dimensions as the image you plan to generate. In our case, it's 832 pixels wide and 1216 pixels high. Now we need an Apply Control Net node. We'll connect this to our process depth image and to a load control net model node. Here we can select the depth model by Sinsur that we just downloaded. Moving on, let's remove the bypass from the K sampler group. You can do this using the keyboard shortcut. 
Control plus B. Then, we connect the positive prompt output to our Apply Control Net Nodes input, and the output to our K sampler. At this point, we'll lower the strength of the control net a bit. Now let's focus on our positive prompt. What we've done here is describe almost the same details as in our reference control net image. However, we've made a few changes, like changing the background from red to solid white. For negative prompt, we just don't want anything that's not safe for work. Moving on to our K sampler settings, we're using a fixed seed number with eight steps and 1.8 CFG. That's because we're working with a lightning model. All right, it's time to generate the image and see what we get. Looking at the result, we can see that this depth model is really powerful. It's captured the exact pose from our reference image, which is great. Plus, it's followed our prompt closely, especially when it comes to the clothing and accessories we described. Later in this video, we'll show you how to change the clothing or background without messing up our AI model's pose. But first, let's check out how good the Canny Sincer model is. Let's compare the output image with our depth model. We'll do this by copying the depth workflow. Then, we just need to change a couple of things. First, we'll switch the Depth Anything node to Canny Edge. Next, we'll change our depth model to the Zinser Canny model. Now using the same prompt and seed number, let's generate the image and see how it compares. As you can see, the Canny model can bring out so much more detail from the reference image than any other control net model. We've got the same hair, identical face features, and clothes that look much closer to the original. On top of that, we've managed to get rid of the red background and lighting that was covering the entire original image. It's really impressive. Let's now try out the open pose control net model by Jinsur and see how it stacks up against the depth model. This time, we'll use a full body shot of a woman sitting on a chair. We need to swap out the Canny Edge node for the DW Pose Estimator node and switch the control net model to Open Pose by Sinsur. Then, We'll update our positive prompt to describe our reference image, adding that we want the character to be sitting in an office. Okay, let's generate the images and take a look. First glance, You'll notice that open pose didn't exactly nail the pose from our reference image. However, it does seem to have more flexibility than the depth model. Open pose gave us four different images. The third one seems to have gotten the pose right, but there are some AI quirks, like the chair looking a bit off with our character. While this was quite a challenging test for open pose, it's still an improvement over many earlier SDXL open pose models. Let's look at how we can improve our AI model's output. Since our depth model did a good job keeping the anatomy, we can now adjust some settings to let the model add more details, like clothing and background. First off, we'll lower the control net strength to 0.6 and see if that brings in new elements. When we generate the image though, not much changes. That's because this depth model is quite strong so we need to do a bit more to get the best results. Next, we'll add a background remover node by Mixlab. This keeps only our AI model and gets rid of the background. We'll connect this to our Depth Anything node.
Now, you'll notice the depth image has changed. It's focusing just on our character. The chair and background have shifted a bit, but our character still has the same pose, which is good. Let's push it further by lowering the depth control net strength to 0.4. We'll also tweak our prompt. We've changed the background to a modern office with a city view and switched the chair to an office chair. Let's generate and see what happens. Much better. We don't have any model hallucinations or bad anatomy, and we can now control more image details using our prompt. It looks like 0.4 is the sweet spot for depth. Now let's swap out the reference image down here, but keep the same settings. The poses are being interpreted correctly, which is amazing progress. For this last part, I'm using a 1024 by 1024 reference image on ControlNet. So naturally, we need to change the empty latent resolution to match 1024 by 1024. Okay, let's change the outfit. We'll take out the old clothes and put in new ones. We want something good for an office job. How about a blue suit and a black skirt? Let's make a picture of that. Well, it looks nice, but it's not quite perfect. You know what? Let's change the settings to get four pictures at once. That way, we can pick the best one. Picture number four looks really good. It has everything we asked for in our description, and the body looks just right. We can also change the checkpoint model to show us how different models handle our workflow and prompt. Remember, each model is trained on a specific style of prompting. Now, look at what we've got here. We've created four images using the Level 4 XL Turbo model. The first two images have an extra leg. This is because we set a low strength on the depth model. However, check out the fourth image. It's come out great. The pose, clothes, and background are all amazingly done. Now, I'd like to give you a quick update about my AI Digital Models course for beginners. I'm still working on it, but it's been quite challenging. You see, I need to explain a lot of small details. Plus, I've been dealing with some health issues lately. My doctor actually told me to take a break from the computer screen for a while. Despite this setback, I'm really hoping to get better soon, so I can finish up the course and release it by the end of next month. If you haven't signed up for the course yet, now's your chance. There's a link in the description where you can get 40% off the original price. Thanks for watching and have a great day.